I would love to see a Brighton in the Champions League, but I don't personally think I don't think it's their goal. We've never heard of this 31-year-old Houston-born German dude. Now he's like the manager of this like you know top-flight English club. So Brighton have placed themselves very intelligently in in the market of football clubs. Oh, Chelsea are trying to be one club, right? They're trying to imitate one club, which is Brighton. And uh, we all saw what they did on Saturday. Again, they were lucky that the goal was chalked off for offside. But I mean, they played really well. They yeah. had like a lot of newcomers. They had a lot of, I wouldn't say debutants, but like still relatively inexperienced players. And they held their own ground. They were playing out from the back. There was a lot of speed. And it just goes to show how well the overall club is run, right? They've changed managers. They've brought in a new 31-year-old guy who probably is the young this manager in the Premier League not ever at least he is one of the youngest and two wins out of two do you think it's it's destined to be a UCL club somewhere in the future I mean they spent 300 million dollars this season or 200 million dollars I mean definitely they belong in Europe somewhere but yeah I think Brighton should be given more respect than they are given uh, at least over the last couple of years they have shown like the resilience that it takes to stay in the top flight of English football they have a clearly well defined style of playing and they are run like a company if you've seen the movie Moneyball right like they only make signings based on data driven decisions it's just like a company you don't care who the manager is you don't care who the CEO is it's all about what your strategy is as a team as a club what kind of players you want to recruit and you know like Brighton have had players they have had players like Trossard they've had players like Kukurea Ben White McAllister Kaiseido Evan Ferguson these are not one-off signings or like one-off yeah. scouting decisions that you make as a club these are consistent decisions in, in terms of your recruitment you're consistently building as and rebuilding a squad that is fit to play in the Premier League, stay in the top 10 even, for example. And yeah, I mean, they have had two good managers like leave the club in Graham Potter and Deserby, but they don't seem like a club who is shaken and they have to go through a rebuilding phase all over again. It's a, like, I feel they're a very, very good model of how modern football clubs should work. Build a club-wide agnostic, manager agnostic model in terms of how you want to play your football, build your squad. And I think that will show results in, in such a volatile footballing universe right and the other thing is that you make a really good point right like they're run like a business and maybe they are achieving all of their goals than like a really top club is like i think tony bloom is a really good businessman their owner they've made so much money from like player sales and yeah. they are continuously have the conveyor belt of like new talent coming in they have this exciting style of football which is like to your point uh, said very manager agnostic but the managers that they bring in also are consistently evolving we've never heard of this 31 year old Houston born German dude now he's like the manager of this like you know top flight English club no other club would take a chance like that right? like yeah. no other club especially a club that has been in the top flight for like so many years and how could you replace Robert to deserve who in the middle of the season had shouts to be a United manager Chelsea manager every other top club wanted him replace him with something completely unknown and start your two games of the season new season with like a really high goal difference and like sitting second in the table right it's just a testament to how this club is run and long may it continue dude like long may it continue to be honest like I would love to see a Brighton in the Champions League but I don't personally think I don't think it's their goal I think their goal is the current sustenance of their model if they get into Europe that's good but they're constantly going to sell players they're constantly Chelsea or someone will keep knocking I think the next big sale is going to be Mitoma followed by NC so and they'll replace these players without like we even realizing it right so yeah no and, and also like a lot of players prefer coming to Brighton over big clubs at a young stage like if if I look back Evan Ferguson had an offer from Liverpool when he was like brought to Brighton and Evan Ferguson chose to play for Brighton because he knew it will be a good starting point for his career that's, that's exactly how things work in corporate like you want to go into a role or more rather a profile rather than a big name club where you'll do good work you will build your reputation as an employee as a player whatever and then you will go on to do better and bigger things that's 
what all of these players right now that I mentioned that's exactly what they're doing so Brighton have placed themselves very intelligently in in the market of football clubs and what you said Nihal right like how how could they even think of replacing a manager like Deserbi who was so successful and like go with a ballsy move of like recruiting a 31 year old I feel like they recruit manages the same way they recruit players it's it's completely data driven again no feelings attached and they were at the same point when Potter went to Chelsea for example they had to find somebody to replace Potter and they went for Deserbi okay yeah he had some experience at Shakhtar Donetsk but he wasn't a big name signing or like a big like an immediate name on somebody who's going to make a decision right it's, it's a very calculated move every single thing that they do and I think they're just like if United are like run like Brighton I would be extremely extremely happy at, for the future of my kudos yeah. to them I feel I think one thing that they have always going for them is lack of any media pressure no matter how much they achieve they'll be like everybody will always be you know giving them all the credits for achieving whatever they do but if they don't like they did last season nobody's on their back because then they're basically reverting back to their what yep. they should be achieving like their usual setup so i think that's again adding to your point where people are like players are choosing them is also because of the fact that they can learn they can like you know just be the best versions of themselves in a less pressure cooker environment but also still in the best league this reminds me of you guys know that french man uh french league will steins or steins i don't remember the name but like this guy was football manager he was playing football manager and he did so well in football manager then he got recruited uh mm-hmm. into like a french rhymes or some some yeah. of those clubs right yeah, yeah and it's it's kind of like a similar appointment this 31 year old german because it's a big punt but to his credit or to his benefit he's doing in Premier League so if he does do good with the team he's set up for like great jobs plus he has money from yeah. Caicedo sale and like last season's uh, a lot of the sales that they did so I think uh, yeah I think I I love that club and for a young up and coming manager there's no better place to like test your trade than at Brighton right because yeah. there is no pressure of like you know scouting and finding your own players because the club does that for you brings in the best possible talent you can just completely solely focus on uh, you know how we want to do this so that's pretty awesome uh, what's the ceiling other, what's the ceiling for the club the ceiling for the club i think this season, is this season this course, season this season. this season definitely i think they can break it into the european spots uh, i don't see top four happening that's probably like too wild but i'd love for that to happen i'd love to prove be proven wrong in this but i don't think top four is happening sixth is a realistic ceiling for the club but they might end up in the top half for sure is my point yeah. so any shout out one one other shout yeah. out that i want to give is that they don't just like recruit young players and stuff like that like james milner danny welbeck like these are like hard hard workers bro they've been in yeah. the premier league for so many years and they just do james milner is like the workman of the <laughs> premier league like literally his is synonymous with the premier league logo right? just like one, he's just one <laughs> just just one start he's the player with maximum victories against united <laughs> fair enough <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um yeah. So legend has it that he has more victories than Arsenal. I don't I think the legend is wrong. <laughs> I think we had a few more. Maybe one or two yeah. but like just yeah. that. <laughs> but personally whenever Danny Welbeck scores it just makes me really happy. Even if it was against yeah. United I was just like when I looked at the score sheet I I skipped the guys slept through the alarm. Uh but when I looked at the score sheet first I saw two and I was like fuck. And then I saw Danny Welbeck I'm like and there was a little smile on my face. I'm like hmm, okay at least like the boy scored like you know what i yeah. mean so yeah. it's nice he's it's one of your he's one of your own he's like yes he's like nice our yes he's, he's one of our own aj yeah 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 that's what i'm saying he's <laughs> one of your own more when you see it in person <laughs> happening and when especially when you wake up in the morning and like oh well back come on <laughs> आज ही मारना था ब्रो आई मीन इफ ही स्कोर दिस गोल्स ही वुडंट हैव सोल्ड हिम राइट सो या बट 